Hey there golfers, I'm Drew Mahol with Second Swing Golf. Today I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, a master club fitter. We're outside today, we're gonna to be discussing the height at which you tee your ball up. Uh, with the driver in particular, Thomas is going to go through uh, a few different heights, if you will, to tee your ball up. We're gonna see how much, you know, teeing it down super low, teeing it up super high, and maybe something in between can make a difference for distance, spin, uh, and also your swing in general. So, Thomas, first, how, what's kind of the height, how would you describe that you use to tee up the ball? And, um, would you say that that's maybe higher or lower than usual? I'd say I'm pretty average to what would be kind of recommended. Yep. Normally I like to have the bowl kind of about halfway above the crown okay. of, of the club here. So tee height wise, the bowl would be kind of like kind of right right in there about halfway above, above the crown. You can okay. kind of see there. What that does is that forces me to hit up on the bowl a little bit. Okay. Talk about efficiency and hitting up on the ball, you can generate a little more distance by getting the ball up in the air and carrying a little bit further. Right. I don't like to have a crazy amount of loft on my driver. I want a little less loft so I can get a little more distance, a little more mm -hmm. ball speed. Yeah, absolutely. And I know one of the things that maybe is a preconceived notion is that if you can maybe tee it low in a windy situation or uh, and then of course when you're downwind, maybe tee it up a little higher to get that ball into the sky and let the wind carry it. So. There's a few different uh, theories out there, and we're gonna kind of maybe test those out and see if they're they're accurate. So uh, I'm eager to watch you hit some drivers here. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of people talk about the idea of tee it high, let it fly. Yeah. I mean that is true. It definitely comes down to hit location as well, yeah. where you catch it on the club face. If you tee the ball a little higher, one it forces you to hit up on the ball a little bit. But if you catch it a little higher on the face, the ball is going to spin a little bit less. Yeah. If you tee it too low when you catch it kind of down the bottom half of the club head. Ball's always going okay. to spin more and launch a little too low, and that's where you sacrifice that carry distance. You lose a bit of distance also because it spins a little bit more there too. So, yeah. T height is very important to make sure you hit it in the right spot. Um, so, slightly high is better than slightly low. Essentially, what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. Right, because then that'll force you to hit it up on the ball, which is better than hitting it a little bit down on the ball. Right? Correct. So, yes. Uh, but yeah, let's get after it here. And uh, one more note too, I will. Uh, ask our viewers to give us a subscribe and a like as well. We've got a lot of videos coming out here in the future, um, whether it be fitting, whether it be club equipment reviews, et cetera, testing, um, all the things that you like about our channel. We've got a lot more pumping out here in the future, so we'd appreciate if you'd subscribe and help us get to that 10,000 mark. Okay, Thomas, looks like you've got this one teed down pretty low to start with here. So we'll start there and then we'll kind of work our way up higher. I do. For our viewers, they probably won't be able to see the golf ball behind the club head here as the tee is a little bit lower. Yeah. That was teed pretty low. Um, what did you think? Just first impressions hitting those four shots. What did you think, and were you comfortable with it even? Uh, no, I wasn't actually. <laughs> um, I like to use to tee the ball a little higher and hit up on the ball a little bit more. I feel like my attack angle was probably a little more down because the ball is yeah. now kind of lower on, on the club. Essentially, it's like it's almost on the ground for me. Um, my launch angle was also very low as well. I think all four shots that I hit there, my launch angle was under 10 degrees. Yep. Yeah, the average launch angle is eight and a half. Okay. Uh, then your uh, your attack angle is minus one on average. So that uh, you know those aren't the driver numbers that I know you're used to. And I think just by looking at it, you know, you always talk about hitting up on the driver. It's almost tough to do that when it's teed that low because then you come in contact with the earth. You know, so yep. <laughs> you have to hit up on the ball to get kind of that ideal trajectory off the tee. This kind of forces you to hit a little bit down on it more like an iron um, and that results in that lower ball flight right now it would be a good shot if say for example I'm hitting a shot into the wind or I'm trying to chase something very very low yeah um, but for me it just wasn't very very comfortable I like to tee the ball a little higher I talk about carry distance a lot mm -hmm. I'm gonna guess my carry distance was probably significantly essentially it's got went down a lot as opposed yeah. to what I normally would carry the ball Right, yeah. I'm sure when we teed up a little bit higher here, that carry distance is going to go pretty far up. And for what it's worth, your height average was 73. 73, so, so that's, that's pretty low. That's pretty low. Yeah. Again, you like to be 100, maybe a little over 100 yep. usually. So, uh, yeah, let's now see how the, I guess, your stock T height compares to what we just hit. Okay.
they hit that well. That's probably one of the best swings that I've made in a long time. <laughs> All right. Well, Thomas, those were some pretty darn good driver swings there for you. Uh, those are some numbers I don't think I've seen from you. Uh, your carry distance, that last one was 297. Um, and looking at the averages here, you know, with your stock T height, your carry distance improved by nearly 20 yards from the low T height. Total distance increased by about 12 yards. So again, launch angle up four degrees. Your attack angle is up three degrees to positive two. So, and then your height 108 on average. So those are the numbers I think that you're really aiming for. That's almost ideal for you. I talk about efficiency a lot. If you have the T height in the right height and it allows you to get your ball position in the right position on towards your left foot, yeah. allows you to hit up on the ball a little bit more. You hit up on the ball with a little bit less loft on the club head, you really can get the ball to go a little bit further. I think 297 carry, I really smoked that one. I feel like yeah. that was about as good as I could have possibly yeah. hit it right there. And just it was just an efficient golf swing. I was able to generate club speed because I was more yep. confident and I was able to hit in the right spot on the club face to generate the right spin. Right, and we should also note that when you do hit up on the ball, that can take spin off as well. So you're at 2386 average with the low T, 2226 with the stock T. So that did drop the spin a little bit and was a contributor to the distance he gained there. Yeah, I was, uh, I was pretty happy with that T height. Yeah, well now let's go to the ultra high height, if you will, and see if that does anything. Okay, Thomas, um, some more impressive numbers for you there. Uh, you eclipsed the 300 carry mark, uh, I think once there with those shots. Um, the ball speed got nearly to 170 at 169.8. Carry distance to uh, average was 298.8. Total distance 321.1. Uh, so, you know, launch angle improved a little or increased a little bit to 13.7. Your total height was 122. Uh, which is 14 feet higher on average than your stock T. So, you know, really, your tack angle is more up, spins more up, total height increased. Uh, and it, for this, in this case, your spin really didn't change. It went to 2257, which is just barely higher than your stock T. Does that give you more distance there? Yeah. If you're efficient with the golf swing, if you can keep that spin rate down by hitting up and, and hit up on the ball, yes, you can pick up distance because you're a little bit more efficient, get that carry distance up a little bit. Yeah. My only concern with this is control. It makes right. it harder for me to control where I want to hit the, hit the ball a little bit. The one that went further, it was a long way left. Yep. And then there was another one that was a little higher and a little, little bit spinnier there as well. But it is a little bit harder to control when you have a tee really, really high and you hit really, really far up on the ball. There's a kind of an optimal kind of area. Hitting down on the ball is going to sacrifice distance, but it is maybe a little easier to hit the ball straighter. Yep. Hit up on the ball, yes, you can pick up distance, but at the same time, you've got to find kind of your optimal area where you're going to hit the same amount of fairways or more fairways, but also pick up a little bit of distance there too. So. Right, that's what I was going to mention too, is your dispersion here. The purple circle is the high T setting that you, or the high T height there, and it is the largest left to right circle, which, yep. you know, you're, it also part of it is you're kind of, when I mean, you do tee it high and let it fly, so to speak, you kind of maybe swing harder at it and get more aggressive, and that can with the more spin and the more height can can create more avenues for the left or right miss. So, uh, but yeah, I think this is kind of telling so far. So I don't think I'll give this over to you and you can break it down even further. Okay, sounds good. Okay, Thomas, you've got the data in front of you. What are you looking at here uh, as a difference between, you know, low T, kind of what you have at your stock T height and then really teeing it up high? Yeah, first thing I wanna look at is the kind of the dispersion pattern on the left screen here. One thing I noticed with the low T height is I did, yes, I did lose a little bit of carry distance as well. However, I did hit the ball fairly straight as mm -hmm. well. So there's pros and cons with regards to kind of T height. Um, we will notice that I carried the ball about 275 going 306 with the very, very low T. Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit less than what I'm used to with regards to my carry distance. Yeah. I'm usually trying to push that 285, 290 mark with my carry distance yeah. um, with my driver normally. So I lost a little bit of distance. If the ball rolls out now, if, the ball, if it's firmer, maybe the ball might kind of still chase out a little bit there, but I do lose a little bit of distance. Yep. 
Um, what we did notice with the higher T height, so the absolute the highest point, was my dispersion pattern also got a little bit larger. Yes, I did hit the ball furthest, but it was maybe mm -hmm. a little bit harder for me to control the ball as well there too. Yeah. So that's kind of dis dispersion. So taking a look at numbers, first thing I notice is club speed. The first club that I hit with the lower T height, I didn't quite swing as hard. Now I wasn't probably as confident with that yeah. T being get down lower there as well. When I tee the ball high, tee it high, let it fly, I'm right. gonna go after it. I'm mm -hmm. gonna make sure I hit up on the ball and get that thing to go a little further. It'll cause me to generate a little bit more club head speed yeah. there as well. So I was 111 basically, 112, 113 with, with a little higher T height. So yeah. I picked up a little bit of club speed there as well. Um, ball speed was also a little bit higher as I gradually went up with regards to the T height as well. So that's important to note. Yeah. Now my efficiency today, I hit everything pretty much right out of the middle of the club face when I was 1.5, 1.5, 1. One, five, one. So very, yeah. very good, efficient golf swings today. We'll just notice the T height was just yeah. a little, caused me to generate a little bit less distance essentially. Um, spin rate, it's kind of interesting looking at the spin. The spin also is all very, very similar. We notice the lower T height did spin about 100 RPMs less yeah. than, the, than the other, other two. Um, if you can get a high launch, low spin, you're going to get more distance. Right. So the fact that I was getting 2,200 2, RPMs of spin, launching the ball at 13 degrees with the uh, higher T height, it's going to go further. Yeah. Just for sure, it's going to go further there too. A lot of that comes down to dynamic loft. So talk about kind of dynamic loft at impact, so the loft on that club at, at impact. When my T height was low, my dynamic loft was 9.9 .9 degrees. Okay. When my T height was high, it, the highest point, it was 15.1 degrees. So essentially I was generating five degrees more loft at impact with the higher T than with the lower T. Huh. I was right in between with the stock T height, I was at 13.9 with regards to the dynamic loft. And that comes back to that attack angle, mm -hmm. so hitting up on the ball essentially. Uh, my attack angle when I had the low T was down one degree. I don't like hitting down the yeah. ball with the driver. And this I'm really trying to control that really hit a low shot. Right. Uh, when I had the, in the stock T height, I was two degrees up. When I had the higher T, I was three degrees up. So naturally the higher mm -hmm. the T, the more it forced me to hit up on the ball a little bit to hit it in the right spot on the club right. head a little bit. Uh, I hit it in the same spot on the club head. I found a way because I hit down on the ball yeah. with the T being lower. I hit yeah. up on the ball with the T higher. So kind of there's definitely pros and cons, control, and distance, but you will notice that I did pick up about 15 yards more total distance with the higher T than the lower T. Right. I mean, now that's the that's the big difference right there. You know, that could be a, a, a real, you know, maybe two club difference on the course if you're talking about a calm day, right, where maybe wind won't affect things. Now, when you win, bring wind into play, you don't want to be teeing your ball super high and you're hitting into the wind, right? Yeah. But, you know, you, when you watch like a long drive competition, for example, those guys aren't teeing it down low to the ground, you know, they got it. <laughs> teed up way higher than you had it today even because yeah. they're trying to maximize the way that they swing up on the golf ball and launch that thing into the air. So um, this is a pretty good, you know, kind of indication of, the, you know, it depends on what you're looking for. You know, if you maybe have a too spinny of a ball that goes high in the air, uh, maybe teeing it down lower could be help to you and straighten that ball out. Whereas if you're somebody that does hit it too low and maybe want a little bit higher ball flight, higher launch, something as simple as teeing it up higher could be the difference that you need. Yeah, uh, very, very important. Now, I'm just a little guy. I'm only weigh anyway, like 165 and 5'9", so I'm not, I'm not a big build. I've got to find a way to be efficient with my golf swing yeah. by teeing the ball a little higher to hit up on the ball and helps me to get a little bit more distance and keep up with the bigger guys. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, Thomas, this was great information for us. Uh, something as simple as changing the height at which you tee the ball up can make you know, 10 to 15 yards of difference on the course. So golfers hope you can use this uh, for your own golf game and improve your performance off the tee.